What's going on guys, Red Wolf Vian here with another Gun on Battle Operations 2 video. Today we'll be going over the support suit type. So, I'm assuming you've seen the suit type video already. Check it out if you're new to the game or would you like a broad overview of the three suit types in Gun on Battle Operations 2. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Now, most support suits specialize in long range combat. Their default weapons are usually long range beam or ballistic weapons. Some notable suits are the GM Sniper series, such as GM Sniper, GM Sniper 2, GM Sniper Custom, or even Desert GM. You have your gun cannon, your gun tank, Zaku 2 heavy arms, your heavy Gundam, your ground Gundam weapons rack, your full armor Gundam series, your Zaku cannon, your Bishop, your Don Barrage, your Zok, your GP04, GP02 ML, RS, and so on. Now another question I see a lot of people ask themselves once I start playing support suits is, is it better to go ballistic or beam? Many times using a beam weapon you ask yourself should I charge or should I do a rapid fire? Well it depends. Will your quick shot do enough damage to warrant the cooldown or does your charge beam stagger? Does it take you longer to charge and shoot one beam than it does two or when you overheat? These are things you want to take into account in every situation. Honestly, I've come to the conclusion that it depends what you're aiming to do in the fight. If you're trying to support other units, staggering them with pot shots, with the ballistic or charged beams, hey, you can do that. Or you can try keeping your DPS consistent with quicker shots, but you may find yourself overheating a lot more. Uh, between beam and ballistic, I honestly say both. Just try both. All suits are different. Definitely try them. Now some weapons stagger on an initial shot like ground Gundam weapon racks, uh, cannon. It's really cool, it's very simple, very easy. You don't have to charge, it does a nice amount of damage and you're good. You can just boost, run, shoot, move. That's all you gotta worry about. Now, using a beam in order to stagger, not all the time, but earlier on, a lot of the stagger comes from the charge shot, so keep that in mind. Now it should be noted that some stagger attacks will either do a regular stagger or a heavy or suppressive stagger. Such weapons that do stagger you'll see usually are the GM Sniper 2, the GM Sniper Custom beam rifle fully charged, the, the weapons racks cannon and so on. Now you can tell the difference between a stagger and a heavy stagger is the first stagger they just take a step to get regain their balance but a heavy stagger they actually fall to the knee and they have to catch yourself pick them up which gives you like an extra second and some change and that extra second can count in the battlefield ability there's many more you have to you know try the weapons out yourself but zaku sniper one is very good early on because it has the the top cannon that can do a heavy stagger as well as the tanks um heavy suppressive cannon which i believe is the apf sds and there's, there's many weapons. This is another reason you should experiment with different sport suits and different weapon types they have. Which one's stronger is really hard. I've tested it recently. It comes down to the suit you're using, the suit you're shooting, their resistance, and your ranged modifier or your ranged boost modifier. So definitely check that out. We'll, go, we'll talk about that a little bit later. There's some unique suits with support. You have things like bishop which they require a lock on to an attack with their barrel mega uh, hands it's really cool you have to hold the lock with the enemy in your crosshairs once locked on you can release a shoot and your hands just you know go follow them out so check that out another thing i would like to mention is when you're charging for beam weapons some units you may be, if you played with general, some units are used to being able to actually move while charging. That is not always the case with support units, so make sure you stop somewhere where an enemy is going to run into you or you can see an enemy. Otherwise, you can kind of kill time and, you know, 5 to 10, 15 seconds can play a big part in a team fight. If you don't know by now, crouching increases your attack and defense. Even going prone increases them more and allows you to avoid being staggered. However, being prone limits your mobility and movements. So you have to be very careful. A lot of things I see people wonder is the vertical or turning speed of your suit. How to improve that? Well, that is actually a custom part called field motor. Look for that. That will help you turn a little bit quicker. Now, I will say some of the strengths of a support suit are their ability to target body parts from afar. 
They can target the legs, the head, and even back a lot easier than most other types of suits. Now, I'll say when using a long range suit, make sure you try to try to target choke points at the beginning of matches uh, so you can predict the enemy's movements, just get a free shot off, or at least help you identify what kind of enemies you're dealing with. Now, using their health bars, if you have the observational data link, this will help you be like, okay, cool, this is a general, or this is a raider, this is another support. Granted, if you see someone else charging, more than likely they're a support. Unless it's a unit Gundam and you're about to get blasted for 8k damage. Your attacks may not always be effective far away, depending on your suit. Like if you're in the Dom Barrage, you probably want to get a little bit closer than a sniper's rank. Uh, when it comes to team battle and team movement, I will say move with your group or as the whole group moves you want to move, don't hang back too far to a situation where you will need help because of a raid sneaks up on you. Make sure you watch your map carefully and assume the support strike is always on you. If you see it, move. No questions asked. Move. Even if it isn't, move. Now, some builds that I like to utilize with support suits uh, are usually attack first. And then we have a lot of variants here, but uh, I prefer attack over defense because if someone's already rushing you, it's probably too late <laughs> to get away from them unless your suit has the mobility. With that being said, I'll say still learn how to fight other suits. Now, things I like, I like to work on attack and speed. It helps me easily move around and reposition myself after an attack or reload, and I can get right back into the fray, get back into my point of view for that next snipe shot. Attack and reload. In case you have some big oofs or you whiff a lot, it allows you to stay in combat as well as getting back into combat after you burn your your beam charge and you miss or you have to reload and you're panicking and you want to save someone. Now, in the rare situation where you can shred enemies, you can definitely look at the ASL. Granted, it's weapon specific, so make sure you check that out. Some people like to use the head back and leg custom parts to increase that damage on there check that out uh that's on you i used to prefer to do attack over that just in general uh and other people actually like to do hp and melee resist if, so they can hang back they're a little bit more tankier they don't do as much damage but they can withstand raid attacks a little bit better if not hold off a raid until the allies come they can actually take one out so don't think you're gonna die just because the raid runs up on you. There's a good chance, but you can totally defend yourself. Now, some useful and notable skills for the support unit. You have the high performance radar. It extends your radar range, it's awesome. You have the high performance scope, which allows you to zoom in further, is amazing. One of the best ones of many supports you have. Now, these, these skills may not be exclusive to support suit, but these are awesome ones I'm going to point out to you guys. Observational data link allows allies to see HP of the enemy's mobile suit captured on radar for the entire team. It's amazing. It is so useful on big maps, especially like Ruined City or any cities, any maps that have a lot of places where you can hide or go around corners. It helps so much, especially if you can sit there at a corner and just time your shot so they run into your bullet when they come around. It's amazing, it's beautiful, beautiful. Now you have things like anti-stealth, which weaken stealthing units, not units, notorious units like Pixie or not. Those are very common in earlier matches, and even some later. You have anti-jamming, which of course, you don't have to worry about your radar getting jammed or you worrying about that not <laughs> running up on you. Um, there is something called precision shelling. It's like plus 5% fire mod normally when crouched or when standing still in the space. Don't see that on many units, but you still see it on some special units. The frontline support system is a skill that actually shortens the respawn time and it stacks. So if you have two units on your team that has this 5%, that's 10% faster respawn time for your entire team. You have the aerospace gimbal, which allows a better pitch in space. Your personal radar is beautiful because you actually see enemy infantry 
on your radar, this little blip. So always keep an eye on your radar, guys. Now there's a few transforming suits or suits that have gimmicks with the touchpad. The Hildolf, if I said that correctly, the tank can actually transform and it has, I believe, stabilization, de stabilization device. Um, it's less likely to stagger, but unable to perform tackle attacks. It's really cool um, whenever you use that. Now, some scout suits actually have the ability to see the radar while scoped in. It's called scout parallel processing device. This isn't super common, but I've been seeing that just a little bit more in some units. It's really dope. Make sure you check this out if you come across a support suit, definitely check it out because that could change the world. Now, going back to raids. When you want to handle raids, you want to be mindful of raid suits and their ability to close the gap. Don't stray too far or behind allies to get picked off unless you have the mobility to escape. Like we said before, some units like full armor find it extremely hard to pull out of a fight or escape a raid unit. However, you can always fight your way out. Since raids usually have lower HP, you may be able to stun one down enough for your allies to come help or even take it out yourself i would say go for stuns or go for the legs all right using need help here simple chat command that should kind of send some red flags to your allies hopefully someone will come help now i'm saying all this i'm not the best player i'm not the number one player i always say i have been playing this game since its initial release in japan i've been playing support as my main ever since the past year or so I've been dabbling with the general in raid suits a little bit more but I definitely found my first love of support because all I could pull was support so hopefully this guide is helping in some way if there's something I missed let me know if you have any got questions let me know if you want to add something let me know I do want to thank you guys from bottom of my heart for taking the time out of your day check this video out if you're new to the game Feel free to let us know. We'll be more than happy to help you out. Join the Discord if you haven't done so already. Join the clan if you're looking for an active group. I love you guys to death. I will see you in the next video. And have a great day. Peace.